development card. If you want to do this, this is the you can buy these cards from Retro USB. It's a website that makes boards for games. It's easy to switch out the chips if you want to. You can supplement uh, your the glitch nest with additional hardware bending. It's also fun. It's cool. Burning e bronze is really exciting. I promise. And uh, erasing it is even more exciting. You're gonna blind you in the process. So nothing better than almost being mean. Um, power pack. Easy to change the tile sets. Easy to make multiple copies of the program with different effects. But it gives these kind of horizontal bands that don't look too cool. And it looks a lot different than the emulation that you see here. Um, the best ways I think to experience this, um, these effects and the software are either through emulation or through some type of EEPROM. With the flash cart, not so much. Um, again, emulation, easy to change tile sets, make multiple copies of the program. Different emulators also provide different results. Emulators are just emulators. They're not the real NES. You'll get different results. Um, FCEUX and Nintendo Nescopia do the best, I think. This is FCEUX. You can even alter the palette of the program if you don't like them. So, um, I already passed those around. Thank God. All right. Um, programs and compilers. These are some programs I like to use. Um, and again, I change this, uh, but I'll, I'll post this too. This is updated from the last time I was talking about Glitchness. YYCHR is a free work tile editor that I showed you earlier. My tech hex edit is a hex editor, which is good because if you're into hex editing, uh, you need something that's fast. You don't have to install it or anything, and you can actually edit the graphics data yourself. So if you want to take a bunch of text from somewhere else and paste it in the hex editor and then see what tiles it generates, you're welcome to do that. And that might be interesting because I know a lot of people manually edit JPEGs and other file formats. So uh, if you're into uh, copying and pasting, and who isn't, uh, you can use that. Um, there is a name table editor, I believe it's included with GlitchNest. It allows you to edit the, um, the, the streams. So if you want to use GlitchNest for live performance, and you're an artist, you can actually put your band's logo in, and then have that be corrupted, and then reset it when it starts looking too uh, uh, corrupted beyond recognition. So again, you can make your own custom screens, your own custom graphics for this. Context has a 6502 assembly highlighter. This is a text editor. It has a highlighter for assembly. If there's anything that makes assembly better than just looking at it in black and white, it's color. And um, <laughs> Nescovia and FCEUX are accurate NES emulators. Accuracy is pretty important because you want to know what it's going to look like on hardware. Um, so before I get into actually looking at the code, um, I'd like to try to show a couple different um, options from the actual Nintendo um, to uh, see how this looks. So if we could switch the video signal over um, to um, composite. Uh, I will put it in here. We'll start with this card here, Glitch Nest. I've never actually seen one of these cards that he made. Um, not much. Let's see. It should be sending a signal. 